Eventually, close air support and indirect fire from Camp Blessing began to come in. When that was happening, that kind of broke the will of the enemy, taking obviously effective fire and, and casualties themselves. That put them on the run in that end of the battle. As night fell, the medevac birds began to arrive. They were stationed so far away that by the time the first round of the medevac birds got there, they were only able to lift one person out from the rest of the patrol. They were located down in the valley because they had to basically jump off the cliff to get to cover. Then they were low on fuel and had to return to base. So it was quite a few hours before we were able to get out there. And I think you had a little bit of fear during the actual firefight itself. You're so focused on what you're doing, you, you don't think about what you're doing, you just gotta do it. The way the terrain was, basically a cliff on one side, the trail, and then a cliff on the, the other. There was no safe landing zone for the helicopters. They basically had to lower a flight medic down on a cable, and then she would you know, hoist up the wounded one at a time. Kane was the worst injured, and I knew that, so I told the flight medic, I was like, hey, he's got to go first, and then the two A and A, and then we took up all the sensitive items, which sensitive items are like anything that we carry, like radios, weapons, you know, night vision, anything that we don't want to fall in the hands of the enemy. And so I made sure all that stuff got out, and then after everything was out and all the wounded were out, then I, you know, got taken up as well.